I don't know about you, but me, I personally would not like to wake up in a coffin, buried in a ground. Apparently, this was a thing back in the day. You see, hundreds of years ago, doctors had trouble knowing if a person is really dead. There were accounts of people buried alive. It's not clear how authentic are those stories, but few seems to be quite real. One dude who got buried alive is a philosopher John Scotus. In 14th century, he was found outside of his coffin and his hands were torn up since he tried to free himself. But one of the worst buried alive stories is probably of Alice Blendon. As story goes, she had drunk an unusual amount of poppy tea and lost her consciousness. Poppy tea is made out of poppy straws and seeds. It has strong sedative effects, so she knocked herself out with the tea. Doctors came to check on her and somehow deduced that she is dead. Her family quickly made arrangements for her burial, so she was buried I believe uh, the same day. The woman was quite big, so they had to force her into a small coffin with sticks and poles so that once that's done, they could quickly shut the coffin's lid. Two days after she was put in the ground, children playing near her grave heard noises. Naturally, that's pretty creepy. So they quickly ran to the headmaster, oh, really? which went to check the gravesite himself. Of course, it took him half a day to do that, but uh, he eventually did go. When he finally got there, he also heard the woman's cries. After some time, she was finally exhumed. She looked terrible. Since she was kinda trying to escape the coffin, she had bruises and blood all over her. But the twist is this. She was so exhausted that people who dug her up thought that she died for real this time. So for second time, Mrs. Blendon was shoved back into the coffin and deposited back into her grave. Just in case, they put a guard next to her grave, you know, for safety. However, the damned guard eventually went to a pub to have a drink. That did it. Alice was finally dead. Don't know why, but uh, they opened her grave again. They found her even in a worse condition. First, she was dead. That's bad. Second, she had torn her face and hands to shreds in her panic to escape. Well, at least those idiots who got involved in her burial got what they deserved, right? They were on trial for murder charge. Oh wait, they didn't. The same doctor which falsely deducted that she is dead saved their asses. He said that he used mirror under her nose to see if she was breathing and that test which never fails, failed him. Anyway, stories like that scared the shit out of people. So they invented coffin alarms and ways to escape the coffins. For example, this is the design of Franz Wester. It has number of features for your liking. No more! You will have trouble with fresh air. This modern design will help you breathe thanks to this groundbreaking air inlet. You have trouble ascending out of the coffin by these ladders? No problem. You also have an alarm bell connected with a rope. Just pull that bad boy and you shall be dug out. If you are not convinced on this design, how about this one, which was made by John Krichbaum? If you feel trapped, just start moving these T-shaped pipes. As soon as you do, you will get some fresh air. Not only that, but the movements will show indications on top of the device that you are alive down there. Once sufficient time has passed to assure that you are dead, the device will be removed. Personally, I don't like it. I don't trust people enough that they would remember to check on the grave. The first recorded safety coffin was constructed on the orders of Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick. He had window installed to allow light in. An air tube to provide a supply of fresh air. He also had two keys one for the coffin lid and the second for the tomb door. A priest from old times also had an idea to run cord from all coffins directly to charge bells. If the deceased 
was actually not dead, he could ring those bells to inform people. Another suggestion was to have a small trumpet-like tube attached. Each day local priest could go around and <laughs> sniff the smell coming out of those trumpets. If the smell was bad, that means it was okay. Thankfully, person was really dead. In 1829, John Gottfried designed a system of bell, which would alert night watchmen in the graveyard. They would attach strings to the corpse's hand, head and feet. You may wonder, yay, how about the wind? Can it start moving the bells and make false alerts? Actually, no, the bells were in a special housing. Also there was a tube, which supplied fresh oxygen. Plus, it has a net which prevented insects from entering the coffin. But there was, uh, there was quite a drawback. You see, when uh, the person decays, it swells up. When that happens, the body may shift to another position. And when the body moves, it starts ringing the bells. A dead man pretty much starts ringing bells. Let that sink in. Anyway, they solved that problem by adding a tube through which the face of the corpse could be seen. Another morbid story comes from 18th century England. Two physicians estimated that from 800 to 2700 people were being buried each year prematurely. So one rich woman back then had a fear of being buried alive. It is called tapophobia. This rich woman was not too keen on being buried alive. So she made a deal with a doctor. The doctor was required to check on her corpse every day until he could be sure, like really sure, that she was dead. So when she actually died, he kept her mummified remains in his collection of weird anatomical specimens. Every day, for several years, doctor was doing his duty and checking her mummified remains. Apparently, she was indeed dead. Later, he moved her into his old clock case. Once a year, he would come and open case to see how his favorite patient was doing. But you can relax. Today our medicine guys are better at detecting if you are really dead. So with medical advances, safety coffin craze seems to have died out. That's it guys. Stay safe, stay alive, be alive. Thanks for watching.